Email is a pretty big deal. Everyone has at least one email service that they use on probably a weekly basis at the very least. And the most common method that people use for accessing their personal inboxes these days is webmail. This is where you go to a website like mail.google.com to access your Gmail inbox, for example. And while webmail is really convenient, it's nowhere near as private or as powerful as using a standalone email application to manage your inboxes. This was actually the OG method where you had an email client like Outlook or maybe Netscape Communicator back in the 90s and you configured the POP and IMAP settings along with your email account information in the app and then boom, you're off to the races. But this configuration step is what filters most people into using webmail because the webmail just works and this is the reason why the average email experience in current year involves being bombarded with ads. Now over the years the most popular webmail services have been packaged into larger and larger suites of cloud-based office apps. The two most popular ones being Google Workspace and Office 365 from Microsoft. Now this should go without saying, but the office suites from these companies that have made billions of dollars off of harvesting data for targeted ads and training AI are not particularly private or libre. But soon there will be an open source alternative to these office suites from Mozilla called Thundermail. So the name relates to Thunderbird, which if you didn't know, is one of the more popular open source email clients available for Linux, by the way, and on Windows and Mac as well. So if you're looking for a FOSS Outlook replacement, check that out. Thunderbird is also available for Android now. I think there was like an unofficial fork of it that was called Canine Mail, and that is still around, but even on their website, they're now recommending that people start using the Thunderbird for Android app. But anyway, Thunderbird always, or at least for a very long time, has had the calendar feature, contacts, and of course, mail bundled into the client, just like Google and Microsoft. But where people get tripped up is Thunderbird just gives you the client and not the service. So you've got to bring your own email account with you because Thunderbird doesn't prompt you to make one like what happens when you go to gmail.com. And this can throw people off, especially if they've never set up their own email service before. Of course, doing that is what's gonna give you the ultimate privacy when doing email. And like most modern non-webmail clients, you can also access multiple inboxes from different email services within the Thunderbird client. That's the real power that you get from using email clients instead of webmail. But for the people that just want to have one single email account that they access from a website, Mozilla will soon be expanding Thunderbird into Thundermail. And this is how they describe it on their blog, which I'll link to in the video's description. Thundermail is an email service with calendars and contacts as well. We want to provide an email accounts to those who love Thunderbird, and we believe that we are capable of providing a better service than the other providers out there. Email that aligns with our values of privacy, freedom, and respect for our users. No ads, no selling or training AI on your data, just your email, and it is your email. With Thundermail, it is our goal to create a next generation email experience that is completely 100% open source and built by all of us, our contributors and users. Unlike the other services, there will not be a single repository where this work is done, but we will try and share relevant places to contribute in future posts like this. So this basically sounds a lot like Gmail, just without the invasions of privacy. Having the email linked to your calendar should also make it easy to create appointments for things based off the keywords in the email, just like what you get with the Gmail suite. And speaking of making appointments, I also learned about this tool called Thunderbird Appointments, which has been around for a little while. I mean, it's still in the beta stage, but this is a really cool tool that allows you to send a link to someone so that they can pick a time on your calendar that will be blocked off for a meeting, appointment, or whatever time you're gonna be booking for someone. 
the business applications for something like this are endless. I mean, think about it, doctors, mechanics, hell, even my barber started using some kind of proprietary scheduling service this year, which of course cost her money and is an open source and privacy respecting like Thunderbird appointment is. So this could be used for so many people. I'm sure food and delivery services as well, because if you think about it, all of that stuff is schedule based. So Thunderbird could end up becoming the backbone for the smart Libre businessmen's enterprise very soon. A couple more tools that are mentioned with this announcement are Thunderbird Send. This is an end-to-end -end encrypted file sharing service that allows you to upload large files to the service and then share those links to download files with others. So of course, for situations where you have attachments that are too big to put on an email, I think generally the limit's around like five or 10 megabytes. Uh, so when you run into those limits, you might use something like Google Drive or OneDrive. But of course, those solutions are not private. Those solutions are not Libre. Thunderbird Send is here to change that. And I know this might be a deal breaker for the people that really hate AI being included into everything, but that's the market right now. And Thunderbird is also hopping on that hype train by making a partnership with Flower AI, an open source framework for privacy preserving federated learning. And this federated learning thing is actually really interesting just by itself. The classic machine learning model has been the subject of a lot of controversy because just the collecting and the storing and the managing of the data that's needed to create a good AI model makes this a very difficult industry for newcomers to break into. And the data costs are actually relatively cheap compared to the computation and electricity. But as far as the data goes, there's a lot of much needed concern over sending all of your data to OpenAI, Google, or some other company that you might not trust that much in order for them to just sell an AI model back to you to use in your day-to-day -day work. So this flower framework could be a much better way to bring models closer to the data that they need to be trained on without having to rely on a handful of centralized corporations to get these models from. They're bundling this in and calling it Thunderbird Assist. Now, in my opinion, as long as all of these services can be self-hosted or at least give you the self-hosted option, I know not everyone's gonna want to do that, but it's important to have that option for the privacy. Um, and especially for things like the email and the AI assistant, then I think this will be really great. End-to-end -end encrypted file sharing is also great. And all of this coming from Mozilla is probably gonna be the best we'll get as far as a competitor to the spookier suites that actually cares about user privacy. Of course, everything is in its very early stages, but you can join the waitlist at thundermail.com. So, are you excited for Thundermail? Do you think it will provide private email and scheduling services to people who can't host their own, or will this just end up becoming another Gmail? Tell me your thoughts in the comments below, like and share this video to hack the algorithm, and check out my online store, based.win, where you can buy my awesome merch or accessories for your phone or laptop. 10% discount when you pay with Monero XMR at checkout. Have a great rest of your day.